worry, anxiety, stress. Did you know that over 70% of the people in the world experience stress to such a degree that it affects not only their mental health but also their physical health as well? Where does it come from? Why do we worry? Why do we have anxiety? It comes from fear. Fear for our future, fear for our family. And just look at the fear the coronavirus caused all over the world. People going and buying an insane amount of toilet paper. It's fear all over the world. And apart from that, this fear of rejection. We fear loneliness, getting old. We fear death. We fear things that we cannot control. And we fear the unknown. But God Almighty says, do not fear. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Now, do you know what is the most frequent command in the Bible? The Old Testament and the New Testament. And some of you might say things like do not murder or love your neighbor as yourself. But no, it is not. The most frequent command of the word of God is do not fear. It says those words over a hundred times in scripture. And then if you add those kind of words that says, do not worry, do not be anxious, it goes over 300. It is not a suggestion, it is a command. God clearly wanted us to get the message because fear is not from God. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So how do you overcome fear? Well, first you need to recognize it. You cannot let fear control your life. You need to learn how to recognize the lies and evil strategies of the devil. And then you need to resist it. But how do you recognize it? By studying God's word, the truth. The only way to know the difference between a lie and the truth is to know the truth. It's easy, right? Well. No, not if you do not know God's word. It is only God's word, the truth, that will set you free. Jesus said in John 8 verse 31, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So when a lie just suddenly pops up into your head, you attack it with biblical truth. For example, if you suddenly get this thought of, Oh, man, I did so many bad things in the past. God cannot love me. I'm worthless. How can anybody love me? You realize that it's a lie because it is in contrast. It is the opposite of what the Bible teaches us. So you attack it with the Bible, with the truth. And you say, no. Romans 8 verse 38 says that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So it's the Word of God that changes you. It transforms your mind. It renews your mind. And you start to live by it. It becomes part of you. So when fear comes, you recognize it for what it is and you fight it with the Word of God. And the best weapon that we have is the promises of God that He already revealed to us in Scripture. It's already here. And you can trust Him because God never changed. His promises remain the same. Malachi 3 verse 6 says, For I am the Lord, I do not change. And God says in Psalm 89 verse 34, My covenant I will not break, nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. So God does not change. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You can hold on to His promises. You know, I meet a lot of Christians. They are always looking for the supernatural. They go to churches where these pastors prophesy over people. And then they hope that they are one of the people that get chosen, that this pastor will prophesy something for them. But you know, we already have God's promises in Scripture. And if you are his child, a true Christian, you can hold on 
to his promises. For example, in Matthew 6 verse 31, Jesus says, Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Just in this promise, God tells us two things. Stop worrying and He will provide. But did you know that most of the promises of God requires one condition? What is this condition? What do you have to do to get God's promises that He will take care of you? You have to put God first in your life, meaning you have to obey His will and follow Him. For example, in this promise that I've just read to you just a few seconds ago, at the end of it, in verse 33, it says, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. So I want to ask you a question. Is God first in your life? Do you love Him with your whole heart and soul, with your whole being? Or do you just sometimes pray to Him whenever you need Him? You use Him as a crutch. And then the second question, if you say yes, if you really do love Him and you put Him first, then do you really trust Him? Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. Do you really trust God with your whole life? With everything? With the future? With your family? With your money? You work with everything. Do you trust God? You might say, well, yes, Daniel, I trust Him. Then why do you fear? You see, the moment you fear, you don't trust God anymore. You started to move out of His rest and you don't have peace anymore. James 1 verse 6 says, But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Do you feel like your life is like a wave in the sea, driven and tossed by the wind, by worldly, temporary problems? You gotta shift your focus from the problem to God that can solve everything. You know, Peter did the same thing. Let me read it to you. Matthew 14 verse 23. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when the evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now on the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped Him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. You see, Peter was okay. When he looked at Jesus, he was okay. He walked on the water. But the moment he changed his focus from Jesus Christ to his problems, he started to sink. It wasn't the water. It wasn't the wind. That made him sink. It was his doubt, his fear. God is always there and He will help us. That's what He promised us. We should not doubt. Our Father owns and controls everything, every little thing in this universe. He knows the number of hair on your head and He can change your life in an instant. But you know, most of the time He's just waiting for us to learn our lesson first. What lesson? The lesson to put Him first, to have Jesus Christ as our priority in every single thing we do. And remember, He already knows what you need. Matthew 6 verse 8 says, 
For your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. And I've said this before, but I have to say this again because it's one of the biggest lessons that I've learned is that the things that I think I need is so different from the things that God knows I need. And a lot of people out there pray for God for something and then when they, they don't get it, they are angry. We are so small, little tiny humans with a three pound brain. It's so silly. We cannot see the future. You might pray that you get that job for the interview that you just went to. But God knows if you get it, you won't reach your full potential or your purpose in this life. And you'll be unhappy. So you need to trust God that He will give you everything you need in every different season of your life if you put Him first in your life. 1 John 5 verse 14 says, Now this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Now most people only focus here on the words, if we ask anything, He hears us. And for some reason, they, they skip the rest that says, according to His will. So you can know with full confidence that if you ask anything of God, that is consistent with His plan and purpose for your life, He will hear you. Jeremiah 17 verse 7 says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord, for he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaves will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. You see, when you truly trust God, you will see your problems very differently. Because when you are anchored in the God Almighty, who promises that He will take care of you, you have nothing to fear. Even when a situation looks bad, you have no idea what God has in store or how God can change the situation or what it's going to lead to. You have no idea. It just looks bad to you because you have imperfect thoughts. This bad situation might actually be good, but you can't see it because you can't see the whole puzzle of how God works. And be honest, most of the time we fear, we are unhappy because we want what we want. But we need to accept God's will in our lives. We need to trust Him. And you know, the apostles were even singing in prison in a bad situation. In Acts 16 verse 23, we read, And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison. Verse 25, But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. <laughs> and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awakening from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called with a loud voice, saying, Do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, ran in, and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. So you see, Paul, Silas, they had no fear. They trusted God. They were singing hymns and praying in prison. And you know, if God did not allow them to go to prison, which looked like a bad situation, that guard would never have given his heart to Christ. And if you read on the passage there, it also says that his family also became Christians. How amazing is that? So you need to know that God might allow certain things in your life to change you or to change the people around you. It's not always about you. And you know what? If you accept it, if you accept God's will in your life, then you will fear nothing because then you know God is in control. And you know, this is the answer to every question. 
and people had for centuries. Everybody wants to know, how can I be happy in life? How can I have that peace that even surpasses my own understanding, even in difficult times? How can I have that peace? Because that's what everybody is after. They try to find their peace and happiness in relationships or money or drugs or all these kind of things. But you can't get it in worldly things. So the answer is and always was and always will be the same. You can only find it in Jesus Christ. Jesus said in John 4 verse 10 to the woman at the well, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with and this well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman didn't understand. She kept looking at physical, worldly things. And Jesus wanted her to see, to understand that which is spiritual, the unseen. Are you like that woman in the well? You just continue on looking at physical things. And God just wants you to learn to take your focus off of all these worldly temporary worries and fears and anxieties and look to God, to Jesus Christ that can solve everything for you because He is the answer to everything. Of course, God can fix your temporary problems. He can do it. But it is more important for Him that you understand that if you have Jesus, you have everything you need. And this is the spiritual water that Jesus talks about. Do you want this eternal water? Do you want God's peace inside of you that surpasses all understanding? It starts with you fully surrendering every single aspect of your life to God. And that includes fear. If you want to know how to do that, watch this video here and I'll see you there. Now remember, God loves you and I love you too. Bye. Take my life and let it be consecrated.